Alrighty, three hours into the game and let's do this. Let's get this girl to bed. What the hell was that? Okay, now I'm scared. I swear that shadow just moved. It's freaking me out. Girl, get a grip. The door's locked tight and you're home alone. If I try to stay busy, it might actually help me get to sleep. Goddamn insomnia. I'm totally exhausted, but I just can't sleep. The fridge door. I'm sure I closed it. Oh, come on, it, it couldn't have just opened on its own. I think I'm starting to be seriously scared. <gasps> Damn it, there's someone in this house. There's someone here. There's someone in the apartment. The phone on the desk. I could call for help. The front door. It's the only way out. If I can reach it, I still have a chance. I must get to the door. I get out of here. That is crazy.
Okay, we can find his son. Hope he's not the killer either. When the parents came home from church, all their children were gone. They searched and called for them, they cried and begged, but it was all to no avail. The children have never been seen again. I have to get out of here and find out what this ticket is about. That letter might be linked to Sean's disappearance. I need to show it to the police. I'm the origami killer. I black out, and then the murdering starts. I know it's me. The origami figure in my hand after my blackout. It's the same one the killer leaves in the hands of his victims. I've never done origami in my life. Goddamn reporters! They've been camped outside my house all day. What does it mean? Some sort of fairy tale? What did I do with Sean? I, I must have done something, but I just can't remember. I couldn't have hurt him. I love him. I love him with all my heart, but what in God's name did I do when he was on the carousel? There's no way back for me, if I've done anything to hurt Sean. It looks like the ticket to a locker. I'd give anything to know where Sean is now. This angel on the ticket, I'm sure I've seen it somewhere before. I think I know where this ticket comes from. Someone sent me that letter for a reason. This doesn't make any sense. It couldn't have been me. I couldn't ever have done that. I'm exhausted. I didn't sleep a wink all night. Mr. Mars, can you confirm that your son you has disappeared? Your son is still alive? Gonna... got no time to waste. I need to find out what's in that locker. Maybe I could... The luggage lockers. They're on the other side of the station. I... I can't make it. Too many people. Too many people.
Hey, what does this mean? Shake? <laughs> Shake. <laughs> I met. <laughs> The balloon! Gotta get the balloon! Jason! Jason. It's Jason. He's there. He's right there. This time I'll save him. Balloon! Gotta get the bull- Jason! Dad! Jason! Yo, this kid is going for the wall. Jason! Nightmare. The whole thing was just a fucking nightmare. Jason... Jason is dead. The lockers. Now I've got line 18, box number 3. Made it. I made it. I managed to get through the goddamn crowd.
Am I the one who, who put this box in the locker? I don't remember. A shoebox? What's the connection with Sean's disappearance? I took a room in the first motel I saw. The box from the locker. What am I going to find inside? The killer is white, aged between 30 and 45. He doesn't act on impulse, but plans his crimes in a very meticulous fashion. He doesn't have anything personal against the victims. That's why he covers their faces with mud, to make them anonymous. Why does he kill them if he doesn't have anything against them? For him, they're more of an image, a symbol. That's probably why he gives them an origami figure and an orchid as gifts to apologize for what he's done to them. Very interesting. And where does all that get us? It builds up a profile of the killer and helps us understand the person we're looking for. It might have been useful if it was done earlier in this investigation. Continue, Jaden. One detail attracted my attention. The interval between the time when a victim disappears and the time when the body is found ranges from three to five days but the rainfall is always at six inches, give or take 10%. What on earth does that mean? All the victims are drowned in rainwater. The killer kills only in the fall when there is plenty of rain. It could be that he puts them in some sort of well or tank that is open to the skies and that fills up with rainwater. The more it rains, the less time the victim has to live. 
Then I studied the geographical distribution of the murders. Generally, a killer commits his first murder near to where he lives, so he has a safe place to flee to if any complications arise. The more confident he becomes, the further he roams from his base. By analyzing the locations where the victims disappeared, I was able to isolate a zone where the killer might live. And, and what size is this, uh, zone? For the moment, about 10 square miles. Ah, oh, great. There must be 10,000 people live in that sort of area. You gonna question them one by one? It may not give us the address of the killer, but at least it's something to go on. Blake, if you've got a better plan, I'm willing to listen. Don't be shy. I'm all ears. <laughs> so what's weak. next? There are two suspects whose psychological profile might fit and can be connected to the comfort zone. I'd like to question them. Damn it. We're wasting our time with this bullshit. The killer's out there somewhere, and we gotta get off our asses and find him. The killer is no ordinary murderer. He is intelligent, organized, and methodical. You won't find him by patrolling the streets. Tell me, Agent Jaden, did you get your vast experience on the <laughs> job, or did you just fucking read about it in some school book? I came here to find a killer. And that is exactly what I'm gonna do. With or without your Fucking help. Fucking asshole! That's enough! Jeez, what's this guy so aggro? You said it took six inches of rainfall before the victim died. How much time do we have left? If the weather forecasts are right, less than 72 hours. Sir, we waste our time coming here. Maybe we should have a little look inside anyway. There's nobody home. There is now. I'm not sure that's entirely legal. Call the cops. Looks like Nathaniel Williams is a pretty religious guy. Gee, it's kind of good. He's a uh, God-fearing idiot, waiting for the end of the world. We questioned him a few months back because he was causing a disturbance in the park. He was ranting and raving. Said he heard voices. Had this idea in his sick little head that I was the Antichrist. I'd come to Earth to persecute him. Real twist. Um, yeah, I was gonna say he's got enough uh, crosses here to last a lifetime. Nathaniel Williams is our prime suspect. He's already been questioned and he lives in the exact geoprofiling zone. The guy's taking a break from reality, holed up here in this crazy apartment. All the signs of a mystical obsessive neurosis compounded by a persecution complex. <laughs> Multivitamins. You don't have to be a profiler to see he's not a killer. We're wasting our time here. It's stifling in here. Those windows haven't been opened in years.
it all. Someone's help. Good timing, Nathaniel. Just the man we're looking for. Angels and ministers of grace defend us. I'm Agent Nam and Jaden, FBI. I'd like to ask you a few questions. As God is my witness, I haven't done anything. I'm innocent. Relax. Nobody's accusing you of anything. We just want to talk. Where do you work, Nathaniel? You have a job? My sole occupation is praying to the all-merciful Lord for the salvation of humanity. Why all the crucifixes? You afraid of something? The hour is nigh, and the wrath of God shall strike men down. I am preparing for the end of the world. You were arrested in a case where a child disappeared from a park. What exactly happened? I'm innocent. I have nothing to do with those murders. I was in the park because God spoke to me. I was arrested because I am the chosen one. That's all. What about the voices, Nathaniel? Do you still hear the voices? We know who talks to you, don't we, Nathaniel? Or we both know who talks to you. Don't speak. That Better just stand down and leave Blake to it. What does he say to you, Nathaniel? I, I guess Blake's trying to break him, but what good is a confession if he does? He orders you to go and find new prey, doesn't he? He needs What's Blake more looking for? More. Why is he pushing him over the edge? No. No. You mustn't mention him. You'll bring him here. Maybe Blake knows what he's doing after all. He told you to go and find Blake, that kid. In what the are park. you doing? The voice has tormented you all night long. You wanted them to stop, didn't you, Nathan? The guy is terrified of Blake. He really thinks he's the Antichrist or something. Stop. That's enough. So you obeyed them to make them stop. You took that boy with you and you drowned him. Isn't that right? No! That's enough. Leave stop. him alone. Stop! You killed them, didn't you, Nathaniel? Are you gonna confess, you bastard? You are the Antichrist. Put down the gun, I Nathaniel. I shall you to your father in hell. He is the son of Satan. He was sent to earth to destroy Shoot, us. For Christ's sake. Shoot! Drop the gun, now! Lieutenant Blake is gonna leave our planet right now and return to the what? realm of shadows. Creature of darkness, I do beseech you to return to the realm of shadows and leave our Nathaniel in peace. Team, you shall regret confronting the emissary of the Lord. You shall know divine power. I'm here to help you, Nathaniel, to get rid of the voices in your head, but you have to trust me. Christ, all powerful, defend us in our battle with the forces of evil. Protect us from the cunning and wiles of the demon. May God Almighty manifest the power of his empire, and may divine power cast Satan and all the other spirits that prowl the world in search of souls into the darkest depths of hell. Keep calm. Everything is gonna be fine, Nathaniel. Back away. Slowly. I don't wanna have to shoot the guy. Now drop the gun. Drop it, Nathaniel. There we go. Put your hands on your head. Turn around. Motherfucker! <laughs> In the name of the Lord, I exorcise thee, Satan. Okay, freak, the show's over. You're under arrest. Pretty damn cool under the circumstances. I would have just shot him. A gun isn't the answer to every problem, Blake. Maybe not, but most of the time it helps.
Weg, tick. Okay, we're back to the dude. Susan Bowles, mother of the origami killer's latest victim. Maybe she knows something about the circumstances surrounding her son's death. Ah, asthma free for the moment, I'm loving it. Hmm. Good old inhaler in my pocket, just in case. Good to know, we might just need it again. Mrs. Bowles? Anybody home? Jeez. Parents today. Going out and leaving a poor little kid like that. Oh, Jesus. <sighs> Wait a minute. This letter. Holy fuck. I hope she... I hope she hasn't... Come on, I have to search the house. Maybe it's not too late. Mrs. Bowles? Mrs. Bowles, are you there? Oh, shit. Oh, damn it, lady. What have you done? Mrs. Bowles! Mrs. Bowles, can you hear me? Wake up! Wake up! I'm gonna call an ambulance. No, I... I don't want to go to the hospital. Please. Okay. You got something around here I can dress this one with? Yeah. I think so. Okay. Don't move. I'll be right back. Quick, she's losing blood. I gotta hurry. Mm. Need some bandages and disinfectant. Gotta be here somewhere. Let's see. I need this, and this, and this. I'm here for you, Susan. You'll be all right. I'll take care of you. Man, it's just always here, <laughs> saving people. Stay with me, Susan. Susan, do you hear me? Susan, stay with me. Can you hear me? Stay with me. Okay, come on. There, I done what I can. That should stop the bleeding. Well, luckily, the wounds aren't too deep. My baby. My baby needs me. Right. You stay there. I'll take care of the baby. Okay? 
Do you know what to do? With a baby, I mean. I'm a private eye. There's nothing I can't do. <laughs> I was a private... Her name is Emily. Gotcha. Mommy will live for now. Let's see how Junior's doing. Eh, wrong room, dude. Hi there, Emily. So, what seems to be the problem, huh? Oh! Going by the smell? I got a pretty good idea. Okay. How do you do this again? There you go, fresh new baby. Damn, three butts at once. <laughs> that should feel better. Right, Emily? Hmm? Hey, what's the matter? I thought we solved the problem. Of course. Now I know why you're crying, my little peachy poop. Mother shall be to the rescue. I guess I better warm this thing up. Emily, are you hungry? Huh? You hold on. I'll just tilt this ball a little bit so you don't choke. Okay. Oh, good job, Emily. Hmm? You're feeling good now, right? <laughs> now, I'm gonna rock you very gently so you can have a nice little snooze. Okay. All right. This one is hard to do slowly. Okay, there we go. Slowly. Slowly and slowly and slowly. <laughs> right, that's about the limit of my maternal powers. Poor kid. Life ain't gonna be easy for her. Thanks for looking after my baby. I didn't 
didn't want to leave her. I just couldn't cope anymore. Just not having Jeremy around. He was such a good boy. I can't understand why anyone would want to hurt him. Do you take care of this baby on your own? Doesn't Jeremy's father live with you anymore? He disappeared. The day after Jeremy. I don't know what happened to him. Maybe... Maybe he couldn't take it. Ever since I've had to look after Emily all on my own and... I couldn't do it anymore. I understand. Did your husband say anything before he disappeared? Did he leave a note or something? No. He left the house without a word and... There was just a cell phone. A cell phone? Yeah, I, I found a cell phone in his dresser. I'm sure it wasn't his. I'd never seen it before. I tried to turn it on, but it didn't work. Do you still have it? Yeah, it's, um, it's in a drawer in the living room. You can have it if you'd like. I'm sure it's of more use to you than to me. Do you have any family or anybody to help you? Yeah. My mother. I didn't want to ask her for anything. We don't really get along. But I guess I'm out of options. Well, look after yourself. And Emily. I will. I promise. In a drawer in the living room. That's what Susan said. Or a standby. <laughs> Eleven oh three. Okay. Adorable shop. <laughs> Parking lot ticket in the origami figure leads to this garage. What am I gonna find here? Can't stop thinking about that well. Sean seemed exhausted. But at least he's alive. I'll do anything to get him out of there. Excuse me? Hey! Oh! Ha! Ah. Sorry. Didn't see you. Uh, what can I do you for? I'd like to get my car. A 
Have I been here hey, before? Hey, you're a pretty Don't patient remember. guy, you are. That car's been there for two years. We took it out for a drive every month to check the tires and batteries, just like you said. Here, it's the third floor down. The service elevator is at the Thanks. far end of the garage. Ah, you have yourself a good one, Chief. Car's been here for two years. What does that mean? It means someone was pretty patient. Dozens of cars, but which one am I looking for? destination is four miles from here. Leave the parking lot and take the first right. Okay, off we go. your destination. Are you ready to show your courage in order to save your son? Listen carefully. Take the highway and drive against the traffic for five miles. If you haven't reached your destination in five minutes, you will be safe. My goodness. I don't want to die. Not here. Not like this. Stop my hands shaking. I'm not going to make it. I'm I'm not gonna make it. I can do it. I'd do anything to save my son. If I succeed, I'll get more letters for the hangar. It's my only need. No turning back now. Okay, let's do this. I've got to do it. For Sean's sake. I have no choice. You still have four miles. 
Upside down. A new bonus, okay. The reception. As there is still no news Let's hope they've got a room left. Mars who disappeared yesterday. A recent report indicates that the police are now treating this as another kidnapping by the Oregon Hello there, sweetheart. What can I do for you? I'd like a room. For you? Anything. Feeling the register. 
Everything sounds so weird. So, what is mouth? Is it chewing something? Mason, page 27. Single. How long will you be staying with us, Ms. Page? I don't know yet. Room 201. Last floor, stairs on the right, in the courtyard. Thanks. The pleasure was all mine. That's for sure. That obnoxious receptionist better not have a spare key to my room. The thought of it leaves me in a cold sweat. Room 201. Stairs on the right, last floor. 